Hey everyone, Mike Linares here, and welcome to the Code Blue podcast brought to you by Holly Blue, the first one and only social media app created by nurses, specifically for nurses. So think of this as a community made just for you. You guys can download the app and connect with nurses in your area and also boost your knowledge and career. So with me today, we have Stephanie Beggs, the one and only, known for her amazing study guides all over Instagram. How many study guides do you think you have? I know we just talked about this, like a few hundred. That's pretty I think I have individually probably over a hundred. Um, yeah, all different topics, all different classes. Yeah. That's so amazing. So she helps nursing students by condensing all that darn material. And you guys can follow her on Instagram and Etsy. Uh, we'll leave the links here as yes. well. Um, but but how did you get started in all that study guide stuff, by the way? So I actually started not even in nursing school, which I think a lot of people get confused of like, how did you have the time to make these pretty, they're all handwritten, by the way. So like people would always ask me, how do you have the time in nursing school to make these so pretty and handwritten when I, I really didn't have the time in nursing school to do this. Um, it actually started more when I was studying for the NCLEX. Mm -hmm. And I made this almost for myself, not really for other people to begin with. Um, I found for the NCLEX the easiest way. I had way more time, obviously, than when I was in nursing school. So I had more time to write things out. And that's the way that I learn best is to write things out multiple times and draw pictures and, and kind of use that as like what I can reference multiple times throughout the day. Um, so I was making them for myself. And then Another way that I find um, studying or like learning, memorizing things easier is if I teach it out loud. Oh, so nice. I started to teach it to, to myself because I had nobody else to study um, for the <laughs> boards with because of obviously COVID. So I was kind of just studying myself and I would teach things out loud um, on a video. And I posted that on a TikTok of mine just for fun, really no reason. And then it started to really blow up from there. Oh. Um, I found that a lot of, yeah, I found that a lot of people almost studied the same way I did, which I thought I was the only one that was kind of talking to myself doing this, but- okay. um, you you're, the, you're, it, you're the only weird one? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was the only weird one, literally talking to myself. I would sometimes just talk to the wall and like explain these um, medical like conditions, but then I realized it started betting, started benefiting more people than just myself. So then I made them for other people. I passed the NCLEX and I just kept going from there because nice. if it was helping this many people, might as well just continue doing it. So yeah, it's pretty amazing. Like now you, here um, I am. You have like a few thousand downloads. I think like you're closing in on like 5,000 on Etsy or something like that. I'm like, what? This is nuts. No, I have, um, in t like for my study sheets on Etsy, I've sold about like 13,000. 13, 000, 13 uh, what sheets. the heck? 13, okay, yeah, 13, yeah, <laughs> 13,000 sales, but in that sale, you can have multiple sheets. So I really don't know exactly how many sheets I've sold, but 13,000 sales so far. That's pretty amazing. That's so cool. Congratulations. That's really cool. It's funny because I, I started the, the videos on YouTube in the same exact way. I never meant for it was yeah. only to help me. I just helped some students who were just like new students, and they're like, "You should put this on YouTube." I'm like, "Ah, no one's ever gonna watch that stuff on YouTube." But but it's funny how like yeah. you know, if something really helps you, it can help someone else. So I, I just love that. Totally. But, yeah, uh, I agree. I I didn't realize how many people actually studied the same out loud or like talking to someone or writing things down. So. Yeah. Seriously. Okay, so let's talk about, so today, guys, we're going to be talking about um, why or how we chose nursing. Um, I'm going to have Stephanie start first, and we're going to talk a little bit about how to get into nursing school if you are not in nursing school yet, and I'll be talking about what to do after nursing school because a lot of students always hit me up about, do I go to nurse practitioner, do I do CRNA or FNP or MSN or PIMP or, I'm just kidding. But what do I do and how do I navigate all that? So, um, so Steph, you have the floor. Why did you choose nursing? Because for me, I, I didn't want to go to nursing, but tell everyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, so for me, I, I mean, 
I took a very untraditional route to nursing, um, which a lot, I didn't, again, didn't think that a lot of people had the same situation that I did, but come to find out a lot of people, I've gotten a lot of people reach out to me with similar scenarios. Um, so I took an untraditional route outside of high school. I thought you obviously have to pick a major when you go to college. And I didn't really know what to pick. And my, all I really was surrounded with at the time was business. My whole family is entrepreneurs. So I Mm -hmm. thought, okay, I'm going to go into business. So that's what I did. Um, I went away for college up to the Bay area in San Francisco and I absolutely hated it. (laughs) Um, I, yeah, I hated this. I hated the school I was going to, but I didn't mind business. It wasn't like amazing. I wasn't loving it, but I still just continued doing what I was doing. And then I thought, okay, I need to make a change here because something I'm not happy with. So I decided I'm going to switch schools because that was the one thing I didn't like. Um, So I switched schools. I moved back to Southern California. And in that time, I thought, okay, do I want to switch majors as well? Or should I just continue with business marketing? Um, Because, I mean, I didn't mind it, but I was so close to getting my degree in the first place. So might as well just finish that. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to finish my business marketing degree. So I did that, graduated. I worked in business marketing. I gave it my best shot. uh, And I just realized it was more of a hobby and something I just have always been surrounded with and something I actually liked doing and was like a passion of mine. Mm -hmm. Um, In this whole college experience, I always had a fascination for like human anatomy, gory things. Like my friends had things happen to them. Oh, I loved it. I absolutely love it. When my friends have something that's like wrong with them, I'm always the person they go to or like send me pictures and stuff. I love that stuff. But, um, and also I was really good at science and math in high school. So it was something I should have picked, but I just never did because I was so young and I didn't know better or what to do. Yeah. Um, so gave it my best shot in business, decided wasn't what I wanted to do. And so I took the leap of faith. Went on. What do you mean? What'd you say? You were, you were working on the Ellen show, right? Or no? Yes. So, yeah. That's so amazing, I, I, I really, That's really cool. I truly tried to give it like my best shot. I didn't want to just get this degree and not actually try to see if I liked it. Yeah. So I did work at, yeah, I worked at Warner Brothers for a little bit and I worked on the Ellen show, Cartoon Network, a couple other um, shows. That's and it just awesome. was not... Yeah, it was fun, but it was more of just a hobby for me than an actual passion. I didn't, I didn't find myself waking up so excited to go to work. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so and I always had in the back of my head, I wanted to do something more meaningful. Yeah, that makes sense. But, so then like, what really like made you take the jump between like, I just got this degree, I'm working on the Ellen show, Cartoon Network, some big brands, like she, you made it right. Um, yeah. And then, like, th- that must have been, like, weird. Like, you have, like, this internal, like, stirring saying, like, oh, I know yeah, I should do it, but should I not do it? Mm-hmm. It was really hard because at that point, it's like, well, now I got this entire degree. I don't want to disappoint anyone by not doing anything with it. Yeah. But then I really had to think about myself and what would make me happiest. So I decided, screw it. Like, I'm just going to go back <laughs> to school and, like, do what I want because at that point, I was older and – Like now I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And so I went and I did my, I researched all of this and keep in mind, my whole family is like business oriented. So I really didn't have anybody that knew like the steps I should take. So I did all the research myself on what to do and where to go from here for nursing. Um, And I took the prerequisites at a community college. At that time, when I started taking my prerequisites, my mom was diagnosed with stage four cancer. So, yeah, so it almost kind of like, it almost was like the stars kind of aligned where I knew that this is exactly what I wanted to be doing. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was just the perfect time. My mom was my first patient, which was kind of cool. And I I was like, what? In the hospital? Like, no, no, (laughs) no, 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 not actually in the hospital. Like, figuratively, she was my first patient. So I got to see a lot of like medical the medical side of things before I was even in nursing school, which was kind of cool. Um, yeah, I went full force when I decided I wanted to do nursing. I went full force. I, I 
did my prerequisites, but not only that, I volunteered at um, one of the biggest hospitals in Los Angeles. And then I also volunteered at a senior center and I worked as a medical scribe on the side. So it was a lot on my plate, but truly I didn't mind because it actually was stuff that I was enjoying. So it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Um, But then I applied to nursing schools and I got in and now I'm here. And now you're here and you're ready. Yeah. And I absolutely love it. I would not have changed a thing for the world. So what about me. like, okay, so did your family or your like dad, because I mean, obviously you're taking care of your mom and, um, mm-hmm. you know, she has cancer and, you know, that that's huge. So I can see it for your mom aspect of saying like, oh, my daughter wants to become a nurse now because of this experience. Did like your dad or anyone else in your family saying like, no, you're throwing your career away and like, you know, in business or, you know, you have a great job. So, like, that's what I was worried about when I had initially, I knew I wanted to make this change to nursing and kind of not really pursue the business side. And Mm -hmm. that was the one thing I was worried about was getting that support from my family. But then I I literally remember the conversation I had sitting at the table I'm sitting at right now. And I just said, like, you know, this is not really what is making me happy. And I, I more often than not think about medical related things or like what I can do in medicine more Mm. uh, because that was what was interesting me for so long and I just never acted on it Mm. Um, so and and honestly their reaction was great I mean they were super supportive of it I did all of my own like research on like how to get there but in terms of just support they were great yeah so so like okay this is a great segue um into like, how did you figure out, like for all of our pre-nursing students who are just thinking yes. about it, kind of like you did, like, um, oh, yeah. and you know, if, even if you're an older like student, uh, we, we see a lot of like half my class was like over 35 and in their forties yeah. uh, for career change. Um, so it's, it's obviously never too late. Um, but I mean, never too late. Yeah. How did you get started and what would you recommend other people like where to start or like how to figure it all out? So I'm a super organized, I write everything down. Um, So what I did to research was I looked at all of the school, well, first I looked at, um, there's a couple different ways you can do this. So for me, because I already have a bachelor's degree, um, there's something called an accelerated bachelor's of science in nursing program. So for me, I was looking at those more because Obviously, it's quicker. You bypass all your general ed classes that you've already done, Mm -hmm. um, and you go straight into nursing classes. And I wanted to look into that more than other uh, bachelor programs or nursing programs in general because it it just I I didn't feel like I was wasting my time then, you know, from this other degree that I got. Yeah. So I looked into all the schools in California that offered an accelerated bachelor's of science in nursing program. And then from there, it's almost kind of like when you're applying outside of high school and every college requires one or two classes that are always something different. And it's so frustrating, but like in order to organize that, I wrote it all down and I looked at what classes I'm going to have to take on top of just prerequisites for each school I wanted to apply to. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. And then from that, I just, I looked at what community colleges, because I went to, did all my prereqs at community colleges. So I went and looked at the community college, the classes to make sure they were transferable. And then that's it, really. Nice. And then get good grades. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so especially for the listeners who who don't know what nursing school entails, because it's funny because when you go to like, uh, we get a lot of Canadian, um, we we actually had a Canadian host uh, a few Mm -hmm. weeks ago, but when you go to like, when we get like a lot of Canadian students, they're just like, yeah, you get into college as a major for nursing and you do all your prerequisites yeah. as an umbrella to kind of yes. you know, for your nursing program. But in the United States, yeah. like you have to do, it's like you have to assemble it. You have to do all of your prereqs on the side and then, and then apply to a school. That's- yeah, it's kind of interesting. I looked into, because I get this question from people all the time um, mm-hmm. about how to get into nursing, how to switch your major into nursing anything to like get into that field and so I kind of looked into the other ways of doing it so I could help other people and there's really I think there's like maybe four different ways you can do it you can go straight from high school and for and apply to a four-year nursing program 
which means like you said, the umbrella um, type yeah. of deal where you do all your general ed classes. And then your last two years of that four years is more geared towards nursing where you do all your nursing classes and then your clinicals. Mm -hmm. um, so you can do that right outside of high school, which is four years, or you can do right outside of high school or when, whenever you decide to do this, you can do um, your prereqs at a community college and then apply to nursing schools, yeah. which is usually nursing schools at that point is going to be like a two year program, yeah. two or three years, depending on where you apply. Mm -hmm. Or you can do what I did, which is if you have a previous degree, it could literally be in anything. Some of my classmates had degrees in dance or really? like degrees in, uh huh. One of my good, good friends in my nursing program has her degree in dance See, and that's another one. For TikTok, you know? <laughs> totally. Yeah. Right. You can do like a dual nurse. Dance yeah, like thing. a nurse TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. So you can really have a degree in anything and then you just have to take your prereqs like I did if you didn't already take them for your undergrad degree. Mm -hmm. And then you can apply to accelerated programs, which is usually like a year or a year and a half type of thing. Hey. So it's super quick. Yeah, it's super quick, but it's great. All of, all of the options are great. You just have to do your research on where you want to go. So I... I did mine at a community college because I actually never wanted to go to nursing school. I was actually talking to people out of oh. going to nursing school. <laughs> oh, no. I was, I know, I know. I, I never really uh, tell a lot of people about this, but I was like a male nurse, like, pff, come on. Because um, <laughs> I used to work on the ambulance and then I was always bent on going to PA school, physician assistant. Oh, okay. But I, I never had my bachelor's degree. Um, I just worked on the ambulance and was a uh, teaching paramedics. And so there was only like three schools you can apply to because it was either a bachelor's degree or you can have apply to like these three or five different schools if you had like 10,000 hours of medical work. Yeah. Um, but thank God that I never got in. I applied like three years in a row. And then I went to, uh, I started working in the ER and I'm like, oh, wow, like nurses actually work in the ER and you can do flights, like flight nurses and like oh, yes. ICU nurses. I just, at the time being like, you know, not in the fields or not in the hospital setting. I just thought that that was all PAs or kind of like doctor stuff, yeah. like Grey's Anatomy, yeah. right? Yeah. You don't really know. Yeah. So yeah, um, you don't really, you don't really know. And you don't know until you get there, to be honest. Yeah. But I mean, you, you did it right. Like you volunteered in the hospital. You were hands on with your mom. You figured yes. out you had a passion for it. And yeah, to be honest, like the two years was still pretty intense for me. You, you did your program in 16 months. I know I did my program in 12, 12 which, months. That's yeah. crazy. It's pretty much, it's divided into three different um, terms, I would say. Okay. And each term is all of one year worth of nursing school into one term. So we had like three years of nursing school in 12 months. Dang. It was unreal. Yeah, it was unreal. I swear I had no life in nursing school. Nursing school was like six days a week. And then I had clinicals three or four days a week, depending on oh, what term it was. Yeah. Gosh. It was definitely me on autopilot for like a year, just grinding. What, what did you guys like? Did you like, did you lose a lot of students to burnout or? No. So I think the the my cohort was only 26 people i believe or 25 okay. um so it's very very small and i think they do that for that specific reason where they're not just going to take any anyone and everyone to the mm -hmm. program because it is so rigorous so they really only take the people who they know are going to actually buckle down for that year and like just do it mm -hmm. um so that's i think that's why it's so small and like not many people are in an accelerated BSN program usually. It's a it's a big commitment. Dang, that's 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 huge. Cause I mean like I always like, you know, uh complained and whined about like a two year nursing program. But then again we had like yeah. holidays off, summers off. Oh yeah. See we didn't. We had to we had clinical I know we had clinical on like Thanksgiving. We had clinic not on Christmas, but like we had clinical on any holiday pretty much. Dang. Um or class. Yeah, it was rough, but yeah. honestly, I would not have wanted to do it any other way because mm. thinking thinking about doing that for two years, I would probably yeah. go crazy. I don't think I could do that. Just do it all in one lump <laughs> sum, yeah. Yeah, it's that, easier I think that's that way. More crazy, yeah. But okay, yeah, so you get in, you get out. 
Yeah, to, and, and to give you the listeners some clarity, if you're thinking about going to nursing, there's a lot of different options. So totally, it's funny because when you're younger or when you feel like you have something to prove, I guess, you feel like, oh, I got to go to like the most prestigious name. I got to get into like this fancy college. Um, and at the same time, you know, all nurses, they just, I mean, sorry, all hospitals just care about really two things is if, you know, number one is an accredited program. If you just have your yes. RN, if you pass the NCLEX. And then number two, if you want to work in a magnet hospital, do you have your BSN or bachelor's of science in nursing or higher? Yes. Yeah. So, I like to tell people though, um, people who are not familiar with the routes to nursing or are still in high school and looking to go into nursing. Um, one of the things that a lot of hospitals are looking for now are your is your bachelor's in nursing. Mm -hmm. So there is a route to just get your associate's degree in nursing from mm -hmm. a community college, which is great. And you can still get hired from a hospital with that associate's degree. But more often than not, these days, they're act asking um, nurses who have just their associate's degree to go back and get their bachelor's. So if you want to kill two birds with one stone, mm -hmm. just go and get your bachelor's um, right outside of high school because they're going to ask for it regardless in the hospital. Um, yeah. And I feel like we're kind of trending that way to oh, more yeah. hospitals are requiring the bachelor's degrees. So. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. my piece of advice. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Because I, I was on the other side of the tracks where I just had, I was a uh, associate's degree nurse for seven years and yeah. never got the bachelor's. Um, good thing mm -hmm. I kind of had experience. It, it's, it's hard because when you get out of school or nursing school, you're mm -hmm. either going to work at a really crappy hospital that doesn't care about a bachelor's because <laughs> they're not magnet. True, <laughs> We call yes. them bottom of the barrel hospitals. <laughs> Yeah. Or, or you shoot for the stars and try your best to get into like a, uh, it's funny because everyone, everyone who graduates wants to go to ICU or ER at like totally. these fancy hospitals. Um, yeah. But it's almost impossible without a bachelor's because everyone yeah. has the same credentials. Everyone passed the NCLEX and they're really yes. only going to choose the bachelor people. So. Exactly. So it's more just be proactive and just get your bachelor's um, if you're planning to do that. And if you are starting from high school or starting, you know, and you know, you want to take the route to nursing, just get the bachelor's degree oh, yeah, or the master's right. degree or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So this kind of segues into a perfect, like, what do you do after nursing school? Is it nurse practitioner? Oh yeah. Is it CRNA? Is it MSN? So, um, there's tons of things you can do. So which many is the things. thing so I think, the thing I think is great about nursing in general is that you can really switch to any specialty you want at whatever time you want. Yeah. And you can, yeah, you can go further in your education and do uh, MSN or NP or CNRA, mm -hmm. um, CRNA, sorry. And <laughs> yeah, there's tons of things you can do. Oh yes. So much. And because it's funny, like when you actually graduate nursing school, you think you're going to be a forever bedside nurse. Um, but oh, no. statistically, Everyone who passes the NCLEX and starts working on the, uh, like the floor, like let's say ICU mm -hmm. as a nurse, 50% of everyone who starts will not be there after five years. So wow, I had, yeah, it's a five I didn't year, know that. Yeah, five-year bedside for inside the hospital setting. If you make it between like, let's say years five and over, you're only 50% and then it starts trickling off. So that's insane. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like nurses don't leave the industry. They'll just go into management or you'll go get your yeah. uh, uh, nurse practitioner or CRNA, or you'll work in a clinic, or you'll do home yeah. health. It just means you're not kind of like in the hospital bedside anymore. So yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. there's so many things you can do. I guess that's true. Fifty percent, five years is a good amount of time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I, I think is the burnout too, and I don't know, but um, but yeah, I I went. I always encourage students. Um, I guess now we're going to talk about if you want to choose nurse practitioner or CRNA uh, or really mm -hmm. what route you want to choose. For me personally, it was teaching. So I got my master's. I actually skipped my bachelor's. So oh, I wow. went from my associates and straight to my master's uh, in 12 months at Capella University. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's another route you can take. I mean, people don't even know that's, that's a route. I didn't crazy. Know There's so many routes. <laughs> I, you know, I almost did that too. When I was applying to nursing schools, because you can apply to master's um, nursing programs 
with a degree in anything as well. Mm. But I applied to one master's program just to take the leap of faith, just to see okay. if I would get in. But then all the other ones I did were my bachelor's ones too. And I ended up picking a bachelor's one, but there is that option too. You can go straight did, into did, a master's. Did you choose, was it an accelerated master's or? It was something, I think in California, they're called entry level masters of science oh, in nursing okay. programs. And entry level means you just have to have the science prereqs and then a bachelor's degree in general. So it doesn't have to be your bachelor's in nursing. It could be like for me, my bachelor's in business marketing um, oh, okay. and then just have the science prereqs done. Nice. Okay. Very cool. So yeah, yeah um, uh, to give the listeners some clarity, did, wait, did you say you wanted to do a nurse practitioner as well? I or? do. That is the goal. Okay, okay. Cross my fingers. I want to do family nurse practitioning so I can get into the ED okay. as a nurse practitioner. Yeah. Oh, dang. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah. So to give you guys some clarity, um, there's a lot of routes you can take. All you have to have is your associates or some type of degree in nursing. You don't really necessarily have to have your bachelor's degree in nursing. Um, yeah. So... After you pass your NCLEX, and let's say you want to be a CRNA or family nurse practitioner. So for FNP, there's a lot of schools that are going online now. So you can do, I, I know Samuel Merritt does it. Um, yeah, I almost went there. Oh, really? Yes, I did. <laughs> you just need to find your own clinical instructors, right? And complete your hours in clinical. Yes. And people yep, just exactly. Shadow. Yeah. Yep. In any graduate program, which a graduate is going to be after your bachelor's, so any master's or um, not even master's, I think your nurse practitioner or your CRNA um, programs, you find your own clinical sites and uh, clinical teachers to mm -hmm. follow pretty much. Yeah. Whereas like in a bachelor's program, there everything is planned for you. You kind of just follow the oh, bachelor's okay. program. As, as far as I know, do you need uh, a certain number of years experience before you apply to a nurse practitioner program? So the ones that I was looking into, I haven't applied to those yet. Um, but the ones that I was looking at, they required a year, one year of ICU experience, Okay. at least for the ones that I was doing. Um, okay. One year of ICU experience, but I don't know if that changes, especially in other states or like other hospitals. Mm. But I'm assuming maybe they're probably going to look for some type of nursing experience. Yeah, they're really I have, so. Yeah, I have seen a couple people who have graduated with their bachelor's and just immediately went into their um, nurse practitioner program. Mm -hmm. They got lucky. They immediately got into their nurse practitioner program and they really never worked as a nurse before wow. going into that nurse practitioner program. Yeah. But I think that's kind of like one off. I don't really know how many people do it that way. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure they probably look at some sort of experience. Yeah, because like in, in nursing school, I always hear it from all the instructors. They always say like, hey, start your first year in med surge where I started my, my first job in ER. And Ooh, I know a lot of students, nice. um, like they're really ambitious and then they go to ICU or ER or somewhere acuity, high acuity. Um, yeah. But I know like a lot of um, FNP programs, I think some allow you now to jump the, the bachelors from associates and just go straight into an FNP program and include wow. the masters. Yeah, so there's a lot of, wow. it's really interesting because when I started, I never wanted, I, I originally wanted to do nurse practitioner, but then I just fell in love with, um, with teaching. And when mm -hmm. I first joined, um, started to do my online MSN, it was going to take me 19 months to do an accelerated associates to masters. And I did that five years okay. ago. Uh, but I, I, I dropped out of it. At the time, the cheapest program was like 28,000 in 19 months. And then wow. when I went to Capella University, it was like less than almost half of that in like 12 months, which is pretty crazy. Okay, that's great. Um, and so a lot of students get confused at this where they're like, do I have to go and get my master's first before I apply to an FNP program or do I have to get my bachelor's first? And really the answer is no. Like it really just depends yeah, on the don't. program. You can just get in with your associates um, with or without experience, but you have to check out your program. And yeah. it usually takes what, like two and a half, three years, maybe? maybe. Yes. I believe they're, they're between two to three years. Okay. Yeah. I don't know about like the route from associates to NP, but as far as me with my bachelor's looking at NP programs, they're about two to three years. Oh, nice. Okay. Now yeah. uh, we have 
a friend who was in their, well, they're already a CRNA. I have a few friends. And if you guys don't know what CRNA, it's basically a nurse anesthesiologist. So doctors historically have had the um, responsibility of putting clients to sleep during surgery. Yep. Called, anesthesiology. Um, anesthesiologist. Yeah. So for a nurse anesthetist, I think I call it anesthesiologist, but a nurse anesthetist, it does the same exact thing. Um, I think they get paid around like 150 to $200,000 right out it's of school. It's actually, yeah, it's the highest paying nurse job you can have. It's, it's a nurse, ana nurse anesthetist. It's kind of a tongue twister. Yeah, nurse anesthetist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, it's uh, really like, cool because the longevity of it all, um, you know, oh, yeah. you don't have to, you know, worry about throwing out your back or, you know, mm -hmm. um, doing all the stuff that nurses normally do for the rest of your career, you're making really good money and you're sitting down in a chair, focusing on one patient doing just the drugs that control the breathing as well as sedation. Uh, yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool. So it's really I, nice. yeah, when I, I actually am looking into that too, because I don't know, for some reason I'm like kind, I find it super cool. The like anesthesiology part of it all. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I used to work as a medical scribe, I followed physicians around like all day. And um, all the physicians, every single time they talked about me or talked to me about what I was going to do in terms of like my career and nursing, whatever, all of them were saying, go get your CRNA, go do it. It's really? the best like nursing job, every single one of them. So for oh, some man. reason, it's just been stuck in my head. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm considering that too. <laughs> There's many yeah. things. I think the coolest part is um, there's such a big community on Holly Blue. So if you guys have any questions of like, should I do FNP? Should I do CRNA? I don't really know any FNPs or CRNAs. You guys can immediately download the app and connect with those specialties. And it just kind of like, the app's kind of like Instagram meets LinkedIn meets um, almost like Tinder in a sense with Yelp. So there's, it's just a whole community of all these like things coming together. So you can literally direct message um, and just ask questions. You can even join forums. That's ask awesome. But, um, but lastly, I do know for CRNA, you need to have at least one or two years experience in the ICU. Um, not, they don't oh, accept cool. ER anymore. Yeah. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a recent change. I think it's two years. And I believe you have to have your bachelor's degree because a lot of programs are competitive. So. Yeah, CRNA um, is pretty hard, so. Yeah, yeah, but. I feel like. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, you need to maybe have your bachelor's at the least for that. Oh, yeah. But again, like you said, it's like you get paid the most. I think the perks are the best in terms of like, you know, think about it. You have a 30 or 40 year career. Um, you don't have to be turning patients anymore, working these crazy mm -hmm. shifts. Um, I mean, you still have to work crazy shifts, but, you know, you're sitting down most of the time and it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. So, yeah, it yeah. rocks. All of these, all of these routes are awesome. And yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Anything else you want to uh, you want to add before we close this out? No, I think that's it. I honestly, I feel like end of the day, just do your research. If you are a um, student coming out of high school or if you're just lost on where you want to go and you want to do nursing, but you don't know how to start. Um, hopefully this gave you a couple ideas of, you know, mm -hmm. where to go and it's not uncommon to not know where you want to go uh, or how to pursue it. And you can always get your degree in something else and then realize that you want to do nursing and that's totally fine. So. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. The joy is in the journey, right? Exactly. You're on your yeah. journey, my man. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening to the Code Blue podcast. Don't forget to download Holly Blue, the one and only nursing app for nurses created by nurses. See you guys in the next episode.